Hey, well, good morning, church, and welcome to another First 15. We are so thankful that you are choosing to start your day right by spending time in prayer and coming to the Father. And as we get ready to start this First 15, that's exactly what I want to do. I just want to go ahead and jump in with a time of prayer as we ask God to prepare our hearts and minds for what he's going to speak to us this morning. Father, we come before you today eager. We desperately need a touch from heaven in this moment as we lay ourselves before you. We ask that you would open our hearts and minds to receive your truth and be captivated by your love. Well, I don't know about you, but I love a good comeback story. I mean, I love it when regardless of the character or the team, when all seems hopeless and lost, in the end, there is redemption. That's one of my favorite person in the scriptures is Peter. His life is a reflection of hope. I mean, What more compelling drama could you ask for from Peter denying Christ by the campfire at night to Jesus restoring Peter by the campfire in the morning? And in his letter to the scattered church, Peter writes these words of living hope. He says, you are not forgotten. For you have been chosen and destined by Father of God. The Holy Spirit has set you apart to be God's holy ones, obedient followers of Jesus Christ, who have been gloriously sprinkled with his blood. May God's delightful grace and peace cascade over you many times over. I mean, how encouraging is it to know that we have not been forgotten? We are chosen and destined and our lives are meant to matter. Therefore, each moment we experience in this life is meant to matter. This gives me hope that regardless of what is in front of me, God is working for good. This truth should help us accept God's grace and peace today. I'd like to go ahead and invite you to take a moment and think about this truth. God has not forgotten you. Reflect on what that means to you today. Even if you have to take a moment and hit the pause button, reflect on that truth. Father, thank you for remembering me in my highs and my lows. You are there. Today, I want to be overwhelmed in your grace and peace. Please let it cascade over me. Thank you that I am chosen and destined for your glory. And so the celebration of hope continues as Peter goes on to write in verse three, celebrate with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has shown us his extravagant mercy for his fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn to experience a living energetic hope that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled and never diminish. It is promised and preserved forever in the heavenly realm for you. See, there is no one who understands the power of rebirth and starting over like Peter. As we said earlier, in one very incredible season of life, Peter experiences the lowest of lows and the highest of highs. And through it all, Peter discovers that no matter what you did, where you've been and where you are, you can always start over. So I'd like to take a moment here and invite you to think about some things in your life that you would like to hit the reset button on. Maybe even right now, hit pause and and get some paper and a pencil and write them down. Think about this. Do you believe that rebirth is possible through Jesus? Father, we praise you for your extravagant mercy today. Your mercy has given us new life, and today we can hit the reset button because of you. We hold on to the promise that you work all things for good. Help us to see what you're doing in our lives and step into the reality of what it means to be reborn. And so then Peter goes on to say in verse five, through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've had to put up with the grief of many trials. But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, for even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith will result in even more praise, glory, and honor when Jesus, the anointed one, is revealed. Even though lately, what a powerful statement and relevant statement for this season of life. As frustrating 
as the things um, are that you and I have been putting up with lately. They fall in comparison to the revelation that these things have shown in our faith. And I assure you, what you have learned during this season of life has been worth it. Not only has it been worth it, but it will result in even more. I mean, just take a moment. I just want you to reflect on what you have learned about yourself and God during this season of life. Again, hit that pause button. Get a piece of paper and a pencil. Write down these things that God has revealed to you in this precious season. Father, I thank you that during this season of difficulty, I can find hope. Thank you for using these things to reveal the condition of my heart and my faith. I know that because of these things, you have more in store for me today. I hold on to the safety of your mighty power and the assurance that you are guarding me. And finally, Peter closes out this part of his letter by saying this in verse eight, you love him passionately, although you did not see him, but through believing in him, you are saturated with an ecstatic joy and just indescribably sublime and immersed in glory for you are reaping the harvest of your faith. The full salvation promised you your soul's victory. So as we wrap up this message from Peter, what of incredible hope uh, that we have in knowing that, listen, a harvest is coming. The victory has been promised and will be fulfilled. Indescribable, ecstatic victory. And this makes me think about some lyrics from uh, Elevation Worship song, Sea of Victory. It's a song that uh, if you've hung out with us at church, you have heard and sung this song many times. And here's a line that, that really sticks with me. It says, the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. And we have today that victory. We get to walk in that victory right now. And so I want you to just take a moment as we begin to close out this time. And I just want you to think about some things you want to see God's victory for in your life. And do more than just write them down. Hit the pause button and Ask God to give you victory over those things in his name and for for his glory. Father, today we declare your victory over our lives. Today we give you glory for the harvest that is coming. We will not fear when the weapons of this life form against us because we know that they will not prosper against you. And today, give us strength to walk in the hope we have in you and let that hope enable us and more importantly, enable others to see you as well. We see the, say these things in your name. Amen. I just want to say thank you so much for hanging out with us for another First 15. It is our hope as always that these moments would stir your heart and affection for Jesus and that it would help you to stir others to come to Jesus and to find their peace in him. Church, we believe a harvest is coming and we can't wait till we can be back together soon. And as always, we just want you to know we love you. We are praying for you. We are in this thing together and the God of the universe is in this with us. We will see you next time.